Are you wanting to make a difference in the world, but don't feel that you have anything of value to offer? Well, then I am so delighted that you're here with me this moment, because today we're going to learn how you can make a difference from anywhere at any time, just as you are. Because today we're going to learn how to create and hold sacred space. Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Marsha Martin, the heart healer, and I'm so honored that you are here with me today on All Saints Day, a day when the veil is thin. And now that we are in this ascension journey, the veil is thin and getting thinner. And so we need to understand what that means for us, how we can expand how we can protect ourselves, and how we can do the most good, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. So let's dive in and take a look at what happens when you create sacred space. But first, let's understand what sacred space is. First of all, it is not confined to a building or a consecrated location. Sacred buildings do exist and, and spaces where there has been great energetic activity or where many people have been gathered throughout the years in prayer and thanksgiving. But that's not the only place where you can hold and engage in that sacred space. So, it is important to remember that, yes, you can find sacred space in churches, temples, and all different holy places. You can find sacred space anywhere that people may go to worship and for to come together in prayer or meditation or any kind of unifying activity with the divine. Sacred space is not limited to a religion, and it's not limited to religion. Any time that you are opening your heart to that divine connection, you are creating a sacred space. So that means that sacred space, that ability to connect with the divine and make a place feel better, feel as though it has more of that divine energy, can be anywhere and at any time. Because it's not the building, it's not the location that is making something sacred or not sacred. It is the intent of the people that are there to connect with the divine. So you don't need any religion. You don't need any special tools. You don't need any particular ritual. You nearly, merely need to bring your intention, your desire to connect with the divine and allow them to flow through you and into the space in which you are occupying. So how are we going to do this? Well, first, remember that you are the important one. So don't take yourself out of the equation for any reason. This can't be done without you. There is no building that when it was built automatically became sacred. There might be a location that is considered sacred, but it didn't start out that way. It became more and more imbued with energetic activity over the years as people gathered in this spot to pray or meditate. Now, there are certain geographic locations that have greater access to grid lines and ley lines, greater um, energetic portals than other places. And there it would be easier to connect with the divine. But again, nothing is happening without you aligning with that energy, filling you up and allowing your fullness, your divine connection to flow out 
into the world. So it's not the place, the location, the geography, the history. None of that makes any difference. It is you and others like you coming to this place again and again and communing with the divine. There is no church the minute that it is built. It's just an empty building, a temple, a mosque, any other religious structure. They are just empty buildings until the people come with the intention of communing together to connect with the divine. When the people come, they are able to fill with the divine and share that energy with all and with the space. So let's make sure that we understand that there is no building that can take the place of your active participation. Now, when we think of what is sacred, Let's make sure that we're all on the same page, and that means devoted or dedicated to a deity or to some religious purpose. Now, I always like to step away from definitions that put it in religious context, but that would sort of define the building, and we can say religious and spiritual. But who is the sacred person? The person is entitled to veneration by association with divinity or divine things. Now, again, I want you to recognize this role is not merely set aside for priests or monks or any other religious personnel. Anyone who is choosing to align with the divine becomes that sacred conduit and connection because sacred space is located within each person. It is your point of divine connection and everyone has this place. It doesn't matter whether you're an atheist, whether you're an agnostic, whether you are deeply religious or whether you just want to have a personal relationship with the divine, or you want nothing to do with the divine because you think it's all hogwash, you're still, and as long as you are in a physical body, you are going to have a divine connection. The amount of time that you spend interacting with that connection determines how big it is, but everyone from their point of physical origin until the completion of that physical life, has a connection to the divine. It is absolutely essential to life. So it doesn't matter how far you may have traveled away from the initial ideal, you will still have and can re return to that divine connection. Now, what's beautiful about this is it doesn't matter if you have spent your entire life doing everything that appears to be contradictory to the divine ideal. Let's pretend that you decided that you're going to be a serial killer in this lifetime. And yet, toward the end of your life, perhaps you've been on a killing spree for a really long time and you're nearing the end of your life or you just had some kind of wake up call and you decide, hey, you know, I think I want to revisit this place. I want to discover the divine. Even though you have wandered away into the deepest darkness, you will be welcomed back with open arms. There is no judgment and no censure. So it doesn't matter what you have chosen to experiment with or engage in during this lifetime. All are welcomed back without judgment, without shame, and without blame. That is the purity of the divine heart. So there's never a reason for you to worry 
whether you will be welcome or whether you are worthy, because always you are seen as more than enough. So let's look at some of the ways that we can strengthen this connection so that we can become even more powerful sacred beings. And the first thing that you always want to do is to clear away the negativity. It is so important that you don't allow disappointments, failures, times when you feel like you're ashamed of your behavior or something that you may have said. Just clear all that away. Any of the times when people made you a promise and didn't keep it, or you made a promise and didn't keep it, clear the heart of all of that previous pain and trauma. You don't need it, it's not serving you, and it's actively preventing you from really stepping into that sacred flame and allowing it to become even larger. So you want to first clear away all that heartbreak, pain, disappointment, just push it aside. It is standing between you and your divine connection. Now remember, you don't have to create anything. You don't need a monument, a temple, an altar. You don't need anything but your willingness and access to your divine connection. So the first thing to do is push away all that negativity. Just release it completely. You don't need it. It's not serving you. And then just with your intention, with your open, pure heart, you're going to begin expanding this flame that is burning already inside of you. So you already have the sacred connection to the divine. All you're doing is allowing it to become bigger. You're fanning the flame just as though you had a fireplace burning in your chest. You're fanning the flame of the divine connection because you got rid of the things that were in the way. You put fresh logs and beautiful kindling on your fire and now you can fan the flames, make it even bigger. And to do this, you open your heart to the possibility of what is instead of the limitations of what you believe is possible. So we've all grown up with ancestral beliefs and cultural beliefs and societal beliefs. They're all shaping us in some way. Our family of origin creates its own drama and adds to that story. But now is the time to just let go of all of that conditioning and step into the purity of purpose, that beautiful place where you are just love because you have allowed yourself to align with the divine, to align with your connection. Open your heart. Don't be afraid. There is nothing to fear. Now, what's going to happen to you when you begin opening to the divine? What's going to happen to you when you clear away this negative and start allowing the fire of the divine to burn more brightly and to expand within you? Well, in just a minute, I'm going to share with you a story about something that happened with me so that you'll understand how simple life with the divine can be and yet how wonderful. But here are some of the benefits that you're going to experience. You're going to have a greater sense of well-being. All of you is going to feel better. You'll be feeling better safe. You'll know you're not alone. Now, even though the energetic beings generally cannot be seen, I know some of you are clairvoyant and you have an amazing gift, which is fabulous, but most of us are not able to see these energetic beings. However, we are aware of their presence and it is that 
presence that helps you feel safe because you know you're not alone. You will feel that divine presence. You will notice that you have an increase in your health. Your physical health will improve because every cell is being nourished. You will also begin experience greater abundance. Now, I don't mean that suddenly you're going to be a billionaire. That may or may not happen. It depends on what is going to feel good to you. But you're going to have a greater abundance of feel great moments. And yes, your bank account probably will expand and your health is going to get better. Your just whole physical well-being and sense of self is going to improve. Your life is going to improve on every level. So when we think of abundance, let's not limit it. Let's not put it in a little container that says it's only money. Because when you feel good, when you feel healthy, when you have energy, when you are clear headed, when you are engaging in wonderful relationships, it is so easy to attract wealth to you. But when you are constricted, when you are feeling unhealthy, unsafe, lonely, lost and confused, you're going to be pushing away all of the abundance, and that includes wealth. And it doesn't matter what kind of job you're working, because I guarantee you that if you are in this place where you're pushing against out of fear, you will find a way to engage with unexpected bills, unexpected repairs, unexpected expenses that will make sure you don't have very much money left over at the end of the week or before the next paycheck. What's going to happen when you begin creating and holding space is you're going to be able to begin overflowing. You're going to fill up. You're going to feel great. And then you're just going to keep going. You're going to overflow and you're going to become a blessing to yourself and everyone else in your world. So what's going to happen to others? If you're getting all this benefit, what's going to happen to them? Well, let's remember that we cannot identify what other people receive or what they don't receive. That is just up to them. Even the divine don't dictate in that way. The divine say, you are free to experience everything that feels good to you or just to experience everything that doesn't. You are free to have the greatest experience possible. You will always return back to the energetic state, back to oneness with the divine. But while you're in that physical body, you are free to experience. And you don't have to receive unless you want to. So you are going to run into some people that don't want to receive whatever it is you're sharing that's okay. Just let it go on to somebody who does. But the people who are willing are going to receive, just as you are, a greater sense of well-being, of love, of joy, of peace. Being in your presence will help them to say yes to their own personal healing, yes to letting go of whatever might be difficult in their lives right now. So you automatically become a blessing without having to do anything except expand your own divine connection. But let's remember that no one is going to receive more benefit than you are. Because when you are connecting with the divine, they don't come into your heart center and then stay trapped in a little tunnel and just say, okay, beam us out. 
When you connect with the divine, they come in through your heart center and fill your entire body with that sense of well-being. They make sure you first are completely filled. And then from your overflow, you just keep blessing the rest of the world. So it's impossible to hold or to create sacred space and to hold it and not receive benefit. It is possible for those who are not you to close themselves off, but if you have opened your heart so that you have created this sacred space, you will benefit. You may begin looking younger because your cells are being so more so completely nourished you may find that you have more energy, more endurance, but no matter what it is or the way that it make, makes itself known to you, it will be beneficial. So don't be afraid to connect with the divine. It's all benefit all the time. So how are you going to achieve this? As I said to you before, it doesn't require any kind of ritual. However, if you have a favorite prayer, if you have a favorite mantra, affirmation, um, novena, or any kind of thing that you like to repeat, that's a beautiful way to create sacred space. It's not required unless it helps you get into the place where you connect more easily with the divine because you are the sacred space. It's your intention, your willingness, and your commitment that is making it possible for you to expand the divine connection. And it is important when I said it's your commitment, it is absolutely a commitment. If you are truly going to make a difference in the world, you can't start a prayer practice, a meditation practice, uh, any kind of connection practice and do it one day out of the year. It must be consistent. It doesn't have to be for all day. I understand that everyone has things they have to do, but if you can commit to five minutes a day to begin, and then as the connection grows, you will probably want to commit to more because it feels so good, so you'll rearrange your schedule. But to begin, just commit to five, day, five minutes every day. That's seven days a week, not just during the workday. And you will notice that you are really beginning to feel better. You're feeling more connected. You can feel that power coming through. You don't feel lonely anymore. You can feel the presence of the divine. Because you are the gift. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It has nothing to do with your age, your sex, your gender, your race, any of these things that we claim make us different. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with intelligence. It is only your willingness to connect through the heart center. So it is something that every one of us can do in this moment in the next moment and in every other moment, no matter who we are, where we are, or what we may know about ritual or prayer or meditation. It's just that sincere desire that matters. So let me explain to you or let me share with you the story of what happened for me on Sunday. 
I had been participating in a summit. I was one of the speakers on the Narcissistic Awareness Summit on Sunday, and I just stayed in the space for hours, lifting up those who had chosen to come to the summit because they were really struggling with some trauma and abuse from those relationships. So I was spending so much of my time when I wasn't actually the speaker, I was spending a lot of my time really digging deep into my divine connection so that I could share that with all of the women. And I think it was all women, um, some men presenters, but only women who happened to be attending this time. But so I could share that with everyone that was there, not just the participants, but also the speakers, to make sure the speakers were able to deliver their content in a way that it was really going to be impactful for those who had chosen to attend. So after this summit, which lasted several hours, I was obviously a little tired. Not in a bad way. I felt absolutely over the top delighted that this summit had gone so well, but I had put out a lot of energy and I was a little weary. So I decided to take a walk. I go outside and where I live, there are flowers blooming all year round and it's not common, but also not incredibly unusual to see a hummingbird. We often see them, but it's like every couple of months, let's say. So I walk out and I believe the plant is called lantana. This particular plant was red and orange and yellow all together. It has these little tiny flowers and I'm walking along and all of a sudden I kind of zero in and realize, oh my gosh, just ahead of me is this teeny tiny little hummingbird. And you'll notice as a tribute, I've got my hummingbird necklace on today. But this little teeny tiny hummingbird is there. And this bird took its time. And it drank from each one of the flowers. And it was so clear that the bird felt perfectly peaceful in my presence. It wasn't afraid. It didn't need to rush off. It took all the time that it needed to gather all of the nectar that it wanted from all of these flowers. And it went to several of the flowers because they're different colors. It, it kind of made the round of the different colors. And I got an opportunity just to drink in the glory of this beautiful bird and to see it so perfectly constructed for its purpose and in order to feel good all of the time. And by that, I mean, it's so fabulous the way the hummingbird has been created. They have this big, long, thin beak so they can get deep into the flower and get all of the nutrition that they need. They have this little tiny body with these fabulous wings that are capable of beating at a very high rate. But they have this little tiny body that doesn't require a whole lot of effort to move it around. And they are able to zip around to every flower and get all the nutrition that they need while they are helping the flower to pollinate and for the world to stay in a healthier balance. So it was this beautiful give and take that the hummingbird was engaging in with the flower. And once the hummingbird left, I walked on and I got a little further down and something landed on my nose. I'm thinking, that's weird. A bug, I go to brush it off and it, it doesn't really move. And I think, gosh, what's on my nose? And I sort of do a cross-eye look and I think, look, and I think, oh my gosh, that's a ladybug. A ladybug landed right on my nose and again, stayed for a couple of minutes, letting me know that the divine was speaking to me through the hummingbird and through the ladybug, filling me up, showing me how much I'm loved and cared for, and just reminding me, 
hey, we love you too. We're sending you these beautiful signs of appreciation. The hummingbird that's not afraid of you, that's going to show you how beautifully the world works together. And the ladybug that's not afraid of you, that's going to remind you of joy and bounty. So that's what happens when you begin holding sacred space. You get little rewards like this. And it doesn't just stop with hummingbirds and ladybugs. That means that the rest of my day, the rest of my life is also blessed by opportunities to either spread this word or to do work that I find absolutely empowering. And that's why it's so important that you give yourself an opportunity to hold sacred space. Begin with just holding it for yourself, just taking that five minutes and saying, oh, I want to experience the grace of God. I want to know what it feels like to be in their presence and to feel safe, to feel loved, to feel joyous, and to feel peaceful. You won't have to do anything to make that energy expand ex except to give it your attention. And then when you're ready to share it with others, just set that intention. But let's say you have someone who you care about who is sick. Well, when you are in that space and after you have filled up, bring that person, that energetic being into your sacred space with you and allow them to be filled with that love so that they can recover from whatever illness they're having or whatever trouble they may be encountering, whatever challenge they may be interacting with at this time. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's a physical illness, whether it's something like an addiction, whether it's a financial difficulty, whatever it is, you just bring them in, shower them with love and let them feel stabilized and feel loved by the well-being that you are sharing with them. So I want you to remember that you cannot outgive the divine. It is not possible as long as you stay connected and you've brushed away all of your negativity so there's nothing standing between you and this connection. It won't be possible for you to give and be just sitting here empty handed. It's not going to happen. You're going to experience a feeling of well being. And the more that you continue with this practice, the more abundance is going to flow into your life from everywhere possible. Every time you give something out energetically, you are making yourself more attractive to have. Ha for abundance to find you. It is the law of attraction in action all of the time. Remember the law of attraction cannot and does not take a holiday. It is always working. So as you're putting good out into the universe, you are becoming a bigger and bigger magnet for receiving good. It's not going to happen immediately. You can't do that first five-minute meditation and say, oh, that's over. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad I, I took that five minutes to connect. It's cumulative. It is going to require your dedication and your ongoing participation. But it's going to be worth it. Just remember that when you get in those periods where you are really feeling like you're sinking, you are disconnecting from the divine. So disconnection is going to happen when we get immersed in negativity, the fear, the doubt, the um, shame. Yeah, shame's a good one. And if you stay too long in the world, if you just spend all day, 
every day, just immersing yourself in the world and forgetting about your heart center, it's going to lower your vibration. It's going to create space between you and the divine, and it is going to interrupt that beautiful flow that you had been working on. And the other way is if you are constantly in a state of unbelief. So you connect with the divine five minutes, first day, and you think, oh, my life isn't any better. Hmm. Guess this didn't work. It's not going to happen that quickly. You still have a lot of residual negative if you're just starting on this path. I invite you, as always, to do heart work and to really dig deep and clear away all of those patterns, those beliefs, and all of that negativity that is separating you. Clear that away and be consistent with your practice. And that's going to allow your vibration to rise. But I also have a helper for you. And as you know, I love to share angelic helpers. Now, because you are connecting with the divine, of course, any being in the energetic angelic realm is going to be able to support you in this journey. And you are going to get direct divine support. However, there is an angelic presence that can make this even easier, especially if you are in one of those wobbly periods or if you are just beginning. A wobbly period is when maybe something unexpected happens and you start doubting, oh, maybe this isn't going to work, or, you know, we all go through those. Or you're just beginning and you have no evidence of the divine presence in your life. So our helper will be Archangel Sandalfan. Now, We've talked about him before, so I'm just going to give you a brief reminder. He's the prophet Elijah, and his primary mission, I'm sorry, he was the prophet Elijah. He is one of the two. His brother is Archangel Metatron, and Archangel Metatron was, oh my gosh, I forgot his human name. It'll come to me. Archangel Metatron is the keeper of the Akashic rec Records because he was a scribe, Eli. He was a scribe in uh, his human life. And Archangel Sandalfon was the prophet Elijah. And as a prophet, he was always giving messages from the divine. So his role as Archangel is to stand tall and to deliver your prayers to the divine. Now, we already know that every prayer is heard and every prayer is answered. But Archangel Sandalfon lets us rest peacefully knowing that when we pray a heartfelt prayer, it is heard by the divine and an answer is sent to us. So then we're able to move over into the receiving space. And that receiving space says, Thank you for the answer. I am ready to receive. It doesn't keep begging. It says, thank you for the answer. And it begins looking around to see where that answer is going to come from. It steps out of doubt and fear. And Archangel Sandalfon is so wonderful at helping us step out of that place of our humanness and into the place of our divinity. He is considered to be the archangel of wishes fulfilled because he provides guidance or confirmation on manifesting your goals. So let's say I have the goal of um, I want to earn a thousand dollars this week. And so I get myself into the space where that is possible. How do I do that? Well, I don't run around and try to work 15 jobs unless I am instructed to do that. Instead, I get myself aligned with the divine so I can receive guidance on how this can be possible. And then I do as I am directed. 
But let's remember, it is not divine direction if it is causing hurt or harm to yourself or anyone else. So if you hear a message from the that you believe is from the divine and it says, go rob a bank and you'll get $1,000, that's causing possible harm to you. You could be killed in the thing. Definite harm to the bank and all of the people that are in the bank. So it cannot be a divine message. The divine may say, we're going to send you a customer or you're going to get a bonus if you do this work and really uplift the people around you, really put, put your whole heart into your work. Or they may just find another way that you're going to receive. But it's always through your participation and in a way that is going to uplift everyone concerned. Remember, they focus on the greatest good for all, not just good for one person. It's not, hey, Susie, we really like you, but, ah, oh, Marsha, no, no, you need to go sit in the corner. That is not divine inspiration. So Archangel Sandofan will give you, help you receive confirmation so that you will keep going with your desired manifestation goal. You won't give up and say, oh, it's never going to happen. He's going to help you stay in alignment and realize manifestation is generally not an overnight process. It generally takes a while to move that which you have created in the energetic into the physical where you can interact with it on the physical plane. He's also going to inspire you to stay grounded. Now, not just grounded. Yes, you want to put your energy into the earth and send that energy of unconditional love deep into the heart of Mother Earth so that you are anchored. But don't forget to also open to the divine. Send your energy of gratitude for all that they give to you and all of the ways in which they are helping you. And then open your heart to receive even more from them. Remembering you cannot outgive God. So everyone, thank you so much for being here. Please remember this day and every day forward, take at least five minutes to connect with the divine that is residing within you and to expand that space so that your life is going to become even more bountiful than it already is. And especially if your life is really tough right now, take 10 minutes every day and commit to expanding. It's your way out of the darkness. You are loved. You are safe. You are magnificent. And there is always something of value that you can offer because when you hold sacred space, you are a blessing to everyone everywhere. Now, don't forget here in the chat, I have given you a link to my new ebook. Just hop on my mailing list. It will be sent right to you. You will have to confirm your email address, but just check your spam folder. If you don't get an instant reply, you will really receive benefit from this book because it's showing you ways in which we don't even realize we may be resisting angelic assistance. So until next time, oh, actually, next week we'll be on Pinterest TV. Another reason to get on the mailing list, because I will put here in the YouTube community a link to that Pinterest TV show. But if you want a direct link, get on my mailing list and I will send you a reminder on Monday. It's next Monday, which is going to be the 7th, I think. Yes, it's next Monday, the 7th, and it's going to be 5 p.m. Pacific time. So 
I'll see you then. We're talking about the blessing of abundance. If you're ready to receive more, join me next Monday at five on Pinterest TV. Thanks everyone. Until next time, I'm sending you all my love.